Hi there and welcome, it's Lori Trumpet Williams and today is our second demonstration in our series of painting alcohol ink abstracts. These quick abstract paintings are really fun to create and they're suitable for alcohol ink artists of all stages. Whether you're just starting out or you've been creating for years, you can always come and do these and they are just fabulous. They're wonderful pieces of art. These are my go-tos for whenever I lose motivation, which is something that happens to artists all the time. And you always need to try to figure out something to get back in into the swing of things and get motivated. Well, these products are perfect for that. So before we jump into the project, I just wanted to invite you, if you haven't already, to join us on Facebook. We have a Facebook group called the Alcohol Ink Art Community. We also have a website, HTTPS, alcoholink.community. And we have a blog there where we post a lot of really amazing information. And we also host a bunch of resources for our society level members. So check us out there. And without further ado, we'll jump into the project. Okay, in this video, we're gonna do the same thing that we did in the previous video, but this time we're just gonna do it on the back of photo paper. It's the Kirkland brand that's sold by Costco, but you can also buy it on Amazon. And it works great. It's similar to Upo um, if you work on the back side. So it behaves similar to Upo. So yesterday was on the Nara paper, and this was what we did on the Nara in the previous video. Um, turned out beautiful. I, I really love the Nara paper and the way the inks move on it. So let's see if we, we're going to use the same color scheme and the same products and we're going to do it this time on the Kirkland photo paper. So we're starting out sunshine yellow. These are Ranger alcohol inks. And I'll provide you a list of all the materials that I use in this demonstration. So I start out just dripping a little bit of this sunshine yellow and then I'm picking up my uh, blending solution and just dropping some of that over. I meant to put it on before to help the inks flow, but I didn't and that's okay. So I'm just going to add it here on top. And as soon as you, I add the blending solution, you can see everything starts to flow. I'm going to remove the lids on all my inks. I'm using raspberry, sunshine yellow and mermaid it's a nice color combination i'm just letting this move and do its thing while i'm doing that i'm using snow cap oh, you need to give snow cap a really good shake until you hear the little bb inside start to move sometimes this depending how long your snow cap has been sitting it could take you know up to three minutes even to get it going but you want to just make sure you shake 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 it good And there we have it. You hear the shake it a little while after that. And then we're also going to use rose gold, which is a beautiful metallic by Ranger. Because we're sticking with the same color scheme as before. So I'm just going to go ahead and let this move on the paper like this around. So I could use isopropyl alcohol for this, but I, what I've learned is that it, it dries a lot faster when you're doing these really beautiful flow designs. You kind of want to um, have a good flow going on. See how I've got that? And I'm trying not to contain, um, mix the yellow too much with the blue. I want it some so we get that natural green mixture in there. But we're just going to move this around until it dries. And then we'll add some more. Actually, while this is still moving, let's add our pink in here. This raspberry is just brilliant. And you can use a stir stick to help move things around like where you want them. Tap off on the end of the paper when you get the excess because if it starts to flow back, you're going to get mud depending on what colors you use. And that stir stick can just help me mix and blend so I can mix some of that into the yellow and then I can add more yellow and one of the things that we don't have on here that really 
gives it a nice blend is the snow cap. And we're gonna add some of that snow cap in here too. When you add the snow cap, it starts to blend in with the ink, especially when it's wet underneath. And it just adds another layer of um, value to, to what you have down and it also uh, draws the eye into certain areas as well. So I just like the effect. So I added in here and there on my landscapes just for just a little added effect. Well, let's get some blending solution. The snow cap moves best with the blending solution as do a number of the Ranger mixatives. They're pearls. Now when the raspberry and yellow mix, it makes a beautiful orange and it just kind of blends in nicely. So I'm just going to go ahead and force that a little bit. Can I hold my page at an angle so I get some drama? Let's uh, try to get rid of some of this down here. Pulling in some of that blue. I can then also use a brush to control some of these pooling edges. And I have a little cup of isopropyl alcohol that I just dip my brush in, clean it off on the towel so that I get rid of the contamination and then I can just control where some of this ink goes and, and get rid of some of those hard edges that you see for me. One of the nice things about the snow cap too is it kind of helps us with the controlling where the flow goes with the alcohol ink. Just isn't that lovely. One of the things that we didn't get here that we got with the other that I really liked was that a little bit of purple. So I'm going to add in some of this blue at the top. And that with this raspberry is going to produce a beautiful purple. Because, you know, red and blue make purple. There we go. And part of um, this whole process, too, is like learning what, how the color, which colors work and react to one another. There we go. Yeah, that adds all the extra drama that I would want. Let's pour a little bit of blending, just a few drops of blending solution in there. And move that around. And that is lovely. And so I'm going to come back at the end here before it's all dry and just run some of this metallic along some of the edge. There we go. So this is, again, this is Rose Gold by Ranger. I just want to give it a little shake and I'm just letting it flow. It doesn't come out as fast as ink does so I can do that a little bit. And I know that you probably the metallic doesn't translate very well to two cameras, but it does look beautiful. Okay. Just a little bit more tweaking. Oops, that's the wrong color there, but that's okay. We're going to make that work just fine, too. But we're going to run up some blending solution here. Take that off the edge. And I do try to trap it off the edge so I don't get that run back too much. But some of it is okay. 
you can also crop the final artwork to get whatever you're looking for. And this I washed out too much of the over here, so I'm gonna add back some more. And that's you know sort of the beauty here is I can do that. A little more blending solution. Okay, I think we're pretty close here. Just a few more last touches. If you like what you've seen here today, and um, you know, if you're just beginning in alcohol inks and you want to get started, the Alcohol Ink Art Community is a great place. We have we have uh, many contributors there. Uh, people are very open with techniques and information on the community uh, Facebook group, and we also have the society. So the so society level membership on our website is for those people who want to learn and dive deeper into creating with alcohol ink and we have over a hundred instructional videos there we also have a private facebook community for society level members so if you get into alcoholics and you really love it and you want to take it to, to a next step the alcohol ink art society is a great option there and of course, if you like what you've seen here today, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, and be sure to subscribe so you get updated when we post new videos, which we do here often. Come learn, create, and share with us. It's a life-changing opportunity.